He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are there any special prayer requests this morning? I got Mike. Thank you for reminding me. And are any others? Yes. I got it. Got it. All right. Any others? All right. If you take your bulletin and open it up to the page where it says Oregon Prelude. And if you would place that on page 184 and use it as your bookmark between the service and the hymns, then you probably won't get lost. If you do get lost, the Lord's Prayer and the Creed are on the back cover of your hymnal. And there we get that going. And then, for the fun of it, we're going to wish TikTok world happy Easter, okay? So, you're, are you ready? So, I'm going to say Christ is risen. You're going to shout out really loud, He's risen indeed, okay? You ready? Christ is risen! I think they probably heard you in China. Good stuff. Let's begin with our opening hymn. Jesus Christ is risen. To- Please turn to page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. beloved in the Lord, 
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and end the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say the intro right together. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. You have led your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened the gate of everlasting life. 
we humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. To the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament lesson for Easter is from Exodus chapter 14. When Pharaoh came near them, the Israelites looked up and saw the Egyptians coming after them. And the Israelites were terrified and cried to the Lord. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt, they asked Moses, that you took us out to die in the desert? Why did you take us away from Egypt? Didn't we tell you in Egypt, let us alone and we'll serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Don't be afraid, Moses told the people. Stand still and see how the Lord is going to save you today. The Egyptians you see today you'll never see again. The Lord is fighting for you. So be still. Why are you crying for me? The Lord asked Moses. Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And Israel will walk through the sea on dry ground. The Egyptians whom I'm making stubborn will go in after them. And I will be glorified at the expense of Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and cavalry. Then the Egyptians will know I am the Lord when I win glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and cavalry. Then... God's angel, who had been going ahead of the caravan of Israel, moved and went behind them as a pillar of cloud, also moved away from in front of them and took his place behind them. And it came between the army of the Egyptians, for whom it was dark cloud, and the army of Israel, for whom it lit up the night. And all night they didn't come near each other. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord had a strong wind blow from the east all night to make the sea go back. And so he changed the sea to dry land. The waters parted, and the Israelites went through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And the water standing like a wall on their right side and on their left. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry, pursued them and went after them into the middle of the sea. And the watch before dawn, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into a panic. He took the wheels off their chariots so they could go ahead of them. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, because the Lord is fighting on their side against Egypt. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord told Moses, and the water will flow back over the Egyptians, their chariots and cavalry. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the water flowed back to its place. The Egyptians fled to avoid it, but the Lord swept them right into the sea. The water flowed back, covered Pharaoh's whole army, the chariots and cavalry that followed Israel into the sea. Not one of them escaped. And the Israelites had gone through the middle of the sea on dry ground, while the water stood like a wall on their right side and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians that day, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the shore of the sea. When Israel saw what a mighty thing the Lord had done to the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and they believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And then Moses and Israelites sang this song to the Lord, I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed, horses and their riders he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Our epistle lessons from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. My fellow Christians, I'm telling you the good news I brought you and you accepted. You stand in it and are saved by it if you cling to the words I used in telling it to you, unless you were trifling when you believed. I brought you what I received, something very important, that Christ died for our sins as the scriptures said he would. 
he was buried, and he rose the third day as the scriptures said he would. Peter saw him, and then the twelve. Then more than 500 Christians at one time. Most of these are still living, but some have gone to their rest. Then James saw him, then all the apostles. Last of all, I saw him, I, who was like one prematurely born, since I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted God's church. God's grace made me what I am, and his grace wasn't wasted on me. But I did far more work than all the others, not I, but God's grace that was with me. Now whether I did it or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We rise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary from Magdala went to the grave and saw the stone had been taken away from the grave. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They've taken the Lord out of the grave, she told them, and we don't know where they've laid him. So Peter and the other disciple started out for the grave, and the two were running side by side, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got to the grave first. He looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but didn't go in. When Simon Peter got there after them, he went into the grave, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. Also the cloth that had been on Jesus' head was not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who got to the grave first also went in, saw it, and believed. They didn't know yet what the Bible meant when it said he had to rise from the dead. So the disciples went home again. Mary stood outside facing the grave and crying. And as she cried, she looked into the grave and saw two angels in white clothes sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman! Why are you crying? They asked her. They've taken my Lord away, she told them, and I don't know where they laid him. And after she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but didn't know it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Whom are you looking for? Sir, she said to him, thinking he was the gardener. If you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned. Rabboni, she said to him in the Jewish language. The word means teacher. Don't hold on to me, Jesus told her. I didn't go up to the Father yet, but go to my brothers and tell them, I am going up to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary from Magdala went and told the disciples, I saw the Lord, and that he said this to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our common faith found in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God a God, light a light, very God a very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. And then he will come again with joy to just 
living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, He is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it was the dreaded first day of the week after the Sabbath. Jesus had been crucified and dead buried and the women who had taken note where Jesus had been laid and of course he was not properly and fully prepared for burial they were going out to finish the job to fully wrap him up with all the herbs and ointments and the whatnot and surprise Jesus is not there they were wondering how to st how do I get that stone rolled away, but the stone was already rolled away. Well, this is just horrible. What happened to his body? Who took it? 
the tomb was empty. And Mary runs back and finds Peter and John and tells them, he isn't in the tomb. I don't know what happened to him. They run to the tomb. Apparently John's the faster runner. <laughs> I'm sure that burnt Peter up some. And he looks in. Peter goes in first, although he got there second. Then John goes in and says, John believed. But what did he believe? He believed Jesus wasn't there. Because the verse that follows says they didn't understand yet. How could they not? Surprise! Angels in the tomb. Doesn't seem to phase Mary, but we know that the Roman guards fell down like they were dead. She is too overwhelmed with Jesus not being there. What happened to his body? Where did they take it? Surprise! Someone shows up. Who are you looking for, he asked. Thinking it was the gardener, where did you lay him? I'll go get him. I'll take him away. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how big or tough Mary was. <laughs> I just don't see her strapping, you know, 165, 185 pounds of dead weight anywhere. He's like, Surprise, it's Jesus. She says, Mary, and he, she, she doesn't recognize the first, but she recognizes his voice, his word. She is overwhelmed. Rabboni. And Jesus gives her this gospel word. I am ascending to my father and to your father. My God and your God. Go tell the disciples to see me in Galilee. Surprise! We have a God and Father now who is the true God and Father. Before we had all kinds of other gods, whatever we turned to for all everything good. But now because Jesus is risen. We have a God and Father now. Jesus, when he became incarnate, became man, united himself with all humanity and all of our sinness, sinfulness at his baptism in the Jordan. He, he had taken it all himself, identified as a sinner, someone who needed to repent, though he never sinned. Jesus, as we heard on Friday, united with us in the wrath of God for our sins on the cross and in the grave. He took upon himself, in himself, the full blunt wrath and fury of God according to his righteousness and holiness that cannot stand in the sight and the place where there is sin. And it all fell upon him. And Jesus, resurrected from the dead, vindicated before all creation, conquering sin and death in the power of the devil, being reunited with God the Father on this day. On Friday, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Easter morning. I'm coming home. In our baptism, we are now joined, united with Jesus in his life, in his suffering, in his death, and in his resurrection. We have become one with him. And in that oneness with him, God is now our God. He wasn't before. I mean, he, he was God nevertheless of all things, but we didn't look to him as God. 
If we knew of him at all, he was just some mean ogre up there in the sky who couldn't wait to bop us over the head. But now we see him as God, the one for whom and to whom we look to for every good. And God is now our Father too. Through holy baptism, we have received the adoption of sons, being heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Such is the matter of Christ's resurrection. That you and I should join him in this great act of power and glory and might and be made children of God. Because that is what we are in baptism and through faith in Christ. We join him, calling him Father. Source of all our life. The source of our righteousness. The source of our holiness. The source of our eternal life. That he gives to us freely. There wasn't anything there that we could do. We couldn't make a choice for it. We couldn't decide for it. What did John tell us in the beginning of his gospel? You were born, born of God, not by the will of the flesh, or by a father's will, but born of God. Such is the fact of the resurrection, of what it bestows upon us. Because apart from the resurrection, we got nothing. Christ said, if Christ isn't, you know, Paul says in Romans 15, if P Christ is not raised, then we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ is raised. He is raised from the dead. Thanks be to God. And because he is raised from the dead, when he returns, he's going to raise all you from the dead. Of course, if you're still here, St. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians, first those who died in Christ will rise first and meet the Lord in the air and then we'll be changed. And then everybody else who's ever lived. So powerful is Christ's resurrection, not only does he raise up everyone who believed in him and everyone who trusted his promise in the Old Testament, but everybody, nobody excluded. There will be a dividing of the sheep and the goats. But everybody's raised. Every single person who ever was. Some to eternal life, some to eternal perdition. If your faith is in Christ and his resurrection, good news, surprise. Yours is the resurrection to an eternal life. And I may the peace of God, which beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. rise for prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, thou Son of Righteousness, who came forth from the dark night of death 
and majesty surpassing the golden eastern dawn, rise also upon our hearts and enable us to contemplate the glories of this sacred day, that we may praise and glorify thee. As our surety thou wast delivered up to death, but behold, thou livest. Thou hast conquered death and destroyed him that had the power of death, having bruised the head of the serpent, the ancient foe of God and man. Thou to descend into the lower parts of the earth, and has spoiled principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly. Hail, lion of the tribe of Judah! O thou conqueror of death, and captain of our salvation! The battle and the victory are thine, but thou dost share thy conquest with us, and dost close us with thy triumph. Thou hast made the firstfruits of them that sleep, because thou liveth, we shall live also. And when thou hast overcome death, thou dost open the kingdom of heaven for all believers. Thou, the true paschal lamb, which was offered for us, but has taken away the sin of the world, and by thy rising again has restored us to innocence and everlasting life. Therefore, we are glad and rejoice in thy goodness, and we bless and praise thy holy name. O thou Prince of Peace, we beseech thee, comfort us with the forgiveness of sins, and abide continually with us, that in all our conflicts we may retain the Easter joy. Fulfill in us with the power of the work of faith. Cause us to rise with thee in true repentance from our natural death of trespasses and sins. And put away the old leaven of malice and wickedness. That we may always walk with thee and serve thee in truth and in pureness of living. May thy spirit put into our minds holy desires. And quicken us in all our duties. That through thy power resting upon us we may overcome the world and the terrors of death, and at thy coming to judge the world appear with thee in glory, being like thee, and having our bodies changed into the fashion of thine own glorious body. Bless thine inheritance, O Lord, govern thy people, lift them up forever, defend and maintain thy church till the end of days. Give us shepherds who shall take heed unto themselves and to the whole flock, and let all pastors and teachers hold fast to the forms of sound words of faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And to thy hands, O King of kings and Lord of lords, we commit our land and all civil authority everywhere, and do all rulers and magistrates with wisdom and justice in the fear of thy holy name, and let them punish wickedness and establish peace, that righteousness may flourish and thy name be glorified. Regard and compassion all who are oppressed by lawless might, all who are suffering for the truth and for conscience sake, all who are beset with temptations to sin, all who are sinking under the weight of disease, all who are ready to despair of thy grace, all who are troubled by the fear of the grave, all who are entering into the valley the shadow of death. And we remember especially, Lord, this day, Steve and Donna and Emma, Mark, Stella and Donna and Fran, Rhonda, Kinsley, Kevin and Evie, Donna and Henry, Elaine and Jane, Donovan and Dylan, Jennifer, Vicki and John, baby Luke, Francis, Doris, Jackie, Sandra, Joanne, Jean, Mike and Canaan, Olivia and Marta and Bill and Elizabeth. Do thou be in them the hope of glory, that at thy appearing may their trial of their faith be found unto thy praise and honor. Now unto thee who are able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of thy glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, power and dominion both now and forever. We continue on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially we are bound to praise you on this day, 
for the glorious resurrection of your son Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the re resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lord, my word to be received, and I say the word, and I shall be healed. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true body of Christ shed for you from the traditions.
please rise to the Nunc de Medicine, page 199. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God, who refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore it of your mercy, you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated.
risen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Well, welcome to our guests and visitors who are here with us today. We're glad you're here. We hope you join us whenever you're in town. Just a couple of announcements real quick. Of course, we have Bible study and fellowship downstairs after this. Uh, next Sunday is our voters meeting, and, that, and so this is our big one. And so we are having a potluck uh, after church instead of Bible study. Uh, and so please bring something to eat. So it's not lucky that we have something to eat. <laughs> and God's blessings on the rest of your day.